if you've been a data engineer anytime in the last five to 10 years, odds are you've worked with JSON data. The challenging part as an engineer is when you have to combine that with some relational data that's in a normal SQL table. And typically what ends up happening is you try to flatten that JSON object and then combine it with your already flattened relational table. So what we're gonna do in this video is take a look at one, how you can flatten data in a modern tool like Snowflake, and then how we can incorporate that into DBT and use some of the built-in Jinja functionality to template this, to make this a reusable component within our project. All right, so the first thing we'll do is quickly review what this data looks like that we're going to be working with. Five records, here we can see artist name, birth name. If you're a hip hop fan like me, I'm sure you're very familiar with these names. But this is just a simple example of something that would typically be in this JSON format. But what we want to do is put this into a staging model that is flattened out. So we would have a column for artist name, birth name, city, state. So first, let's just talk about how we can do that at all within Snowflake. And the way it works is like this. Do a comma, and the term is lateral flatten. And then in parentheses, you put input. And for us, the input here will be that JSON column. In our case, it's artist data. So I'll put artist data. And this is the equivalent of a join. So we'll give this a join name. I'll call this JSON. If you're not familiar with this lateral flatten function, I'll leave a link in the description. It may be specific to Snowflake, but I have to believe that there are similar functionalities on the other big uh, modern data stacks. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so we have our JSON object. Here's the original table right here, these two columns. And then we can see Snowflake flattened this for us and gives us some uh, columns here. So really what we care about here is not necessarily the record values, but the column names. That's the first thing we need to figure out. So let's do distinct JSON key, because the key is this first part, the keys and values. We want the keys. We want the distinct keys. And there we have it. So we have the four distinct column names, AKA keys, you could call this column name. And we have that. What we want to do now is take these column names, put them into an array, and then use the Jinja functionality of DBT to iterate through this and compile our SQL for us. So it'll flatten it out and essentially list all of the columns for us. In this case, it's only four, but imagine if you had a hundred columns, it'll do this no matter how many columns you have. So let's look at how we can do that. Okay, so we're back here in our DBT project and I've done two things real quick, just to, for the sake of time. One is I added a new directory for public within our staging folder so that it matches what we have here. Created a source file. So this source is pointing to this table and then created a basic staging model here that we can use, which is where we're going to ultimately use this logic to flatten and create a new model. I'm going to go ahead and paste this in here to get us started. And instead of this, what we can do now, I'd replace this with Jinja. And if we do a DBT compile, just to show that this will compile as is correctly, let's take a look at the target output. And here it is, we can see it replaced this correctly. And this is where we're currently at. So all good so far. As we mentioned, what we want to do is take the output of this query and do something with it. We want to take these column names, put it into an array, and then use the, that array to compile our SQL. But in order to do that, we need to actually run this query first before anything can happen. So how do we do that? Let's take a look at the dbt docs and there is a Jinja function for run query. And here's an example that we can use pretty closely to get what we want. So what I'm going to do is copy this. This is definitely one of the great things about dbt is the documentation, grab what you want and use it for your own purposes. So that's what we're doing here. Let's go ahead and uh, copy this and we'll, we'll work with this here. So in this case, we have a set payments method query. So this is the query. This is the equivalent of kind of what we have here. Column name query, just to make a note. And they're putting this into a variable, setting a variable of the query itself. And then they're creating a second variable here called results. And that is going to be the output 
of that query. And they're using this run query function, Jinja function to get that result. So first, let's just go ahead and, and copy this here. Have our sets. So we will call this instead of payment methods, we'll say JSON column query. Here's the start of the set. Here's the end. So let's get rid of this. And we want to set the results to be the output of that query. So again, now instead of payment methods, we'll do JSON. And the last part here is saying if execute, meaning if you're actually running DBT, in this case, they're saying get the first column and put it as a list. So before they were getting the first column of payment methods, in our case, we just, we're only returning one column and that first column will be this list. Run the query. We want to get the first column and the values of it. In this case, the values are each of the names of the columns and set it in another variable, which is results list. And if for some reason this gets messed up and there is no actual values, it will just return an empty set. But here, this is where we're turning this result set into an array. And by doing that, once we get to this select statement, we can use this for loop here and iterate through that list. So let's clean this up a little bit to get what we want. In our case, we are pulling from this table, not payments. We don't need the group by. We don't need this. Instead of order ID, we could just put artist data so that we can see this original variant JSON value. Now we need to iterate through this list. So it's saying for a single object in the list, do something. And in our case, we're using the same name for the variable list, but we can call, we don't need to call it payment method. Te technically you could keep it because it's just whatever you're referring to one instance within the list. Let's not do that. We'll call this column name. So for each column name in the result list, let's uh, do something. And we won't have a case statement here, but what we can do is say, and again, we're, we replace payment method here. We can do something like this for each column name in the result list. So in each of these, return the name of the column and alias that column as that name. So this is where we're going to get a little tricky as well. So first let's, let's just see what this looks like, because this is not going to be exactly what we want, but let's see if we compile this, what's happening and, and what we're, where we're at. So now we're back to the compiled version and we can see it returned the list for us. So we're getting artist name, birth name, home state, and this is cool, but this isn't actually going to work for us. So if we look at this, First issue is we have a trailing comma, so that's a problem. But even if we were to get rid of that, there is no actual column called artist name directly in here. The way that we can get the value of it is to qualify it through the JSON object itself. If you're unfamiliar with this, I have another video on working with JSON and Snowflake, so I'm going to move through this a little quickly. But essentially what we want to do is this. The name of the JSON column, in our case, artist data, colon, and then the key, in our case, artist name. So we're going to do this for each of them. Now let's see. see. This is what we want. It's taking the value for each instance of this. So instead of just pulling the name, what we want is artist data column name. Let's compile again real quick. And here this updated. So now we're closer. But again, we have that trailing comma. Classic typo. Let's try this again. This refreshed. We know it'll fail because of the comma. But now this works. Okay, so how do we get rid of the trailing comma? Using the loop dot last to avoid trailing commas. And again, this is something that's built in. And we can just copy this right here. So let's go here. And essentially what this is going to do now is it's going to recognize if we're in a loop and we are because we have this for loop right here. It's going to say if we're not in the last 
value in the loop at a comma. And if that's not true, so if it is the last, it won't. So what this will do is return the result set with the commas the way that we want. Go ahead and compile. And here, now we can see it updated correctly. We no longer have that trailing comma, and we should be able to run this right away. Now, two last nuanced things is, one, you could decide you don't want these quotes here, so maybe you cast everything as a text, as a var car, or you figure out what the actual data type is that's outside the scope of this video. And so that's a quick change that we can do. You know, we could say something like this, and it will return it like that and now it looks a little bit cleaner. So now we've gone from this to dynamically returning each value in a new column in a fairly clean way. So now this works, we have everything essentially working the way we want, but we also have all this in just one model. There's a lot going on in the one model and it's hard coded to this one source. And what we want to do typically is not repeat ourselves with the same logic. And we'll likely want to reuse this for different models. We may have hundreds of models that each require us to flatten and do the same thing. We don't wanna to have to copy and paste this whole thing every single time. So the way we can handle this is by creating this as a macro and then calling that macro based on different variables. So let's see how we can do that. So what we'll do is go over to macros and I'll create a new macro and call it flatten json.sql. We'll add these brackets here. When you're creating a macro, you call it macro, give it a name, and we'll call this flatten json with some inputs. Close this out, and macro. Let's copy all of this into here. Now there's a bunch of different ways you could do this, and you may need to fine tune this based on what you want. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll take two inputs. We'll say we want the model name, and the JSON column that has the variant data. So instead of us hard coding this, we'll replace it with this variable. And we'll do the same down here for the final select. Our goal here is to have this macro return a flattened result set to us. Second is the JSON column. So we'll, instead of this, we'll put this as a variable. And we use this anywhere else. We could do this. So it will know to use that as the first part. We'll keep this as hard-coded as Varkar. Again, there's definitely other ways that you could do this. You could take this to the next level and dynamically figure out the data types, but for now, we'll just keep this as Varkar. And that should be it. So let's give this a shot. Let's see what happens here. Let's go back to our model. And instead of all of this stuff here, what we will instead do is just call this macro. So our macro is called flatten JSON, and we're going to take two inputs. First is, like we said, model name. What we can do is put this in here. It will dynamically put the correct database schema and whatnot, depending on maybe you're in different environments. So this is a way you could do that. And the JSON column is artist data. All right, so now again, we've just replaced all of that. It's going to call this macro. And in the model name, it's going to return this value. And in the JSON column name, we're going to give it this value. Let's see what happens if we compile this now. Nope, I'm sorry, I should have removed these um, brackets. We don't need that here. Oh man, my spelling is brutal today. Artist, that's twice now, sorry everybody. There we go. So now this is done. If we look again at the target output, we can see this worked for us the way we want, but this time it came through that macro instead of us hard coding it. So imagine now if you had, you know, different sources here, you could have maybe hip hop, songs and song data. If it's also a JSON model, it could have more columns, but it's going to pull these variables and you can just reuse this. So what I would typically suggest here is follow with DBT conventions, put these in CTEs and still be explicit in another sense. Maybe source model as this. Remember this is returning that entire result set from this final query here. It's gonna put it in this CTE 
And then what I would do is create our final select and select each of the column names from this original CTE. And then a select all from final. In our case here, we know there's only a few columns, so this is pretty easy. So I understand that listing all the columns might feel a little repetitive, but what you're doing is flattening them, listing them out one time, source centric transformations here, rename if you need to, you know, maybe the flattened version doesn't have the correct name that you want to use. You can list them out here and, uh, and adjust that. And once you do it once it's set and then it's just minor tweaking. So I would recommend listing it out again here just to be more organized. And so everybody knows exactly what's coming out of that flattened source for that particular uh, model. All right, so here we are, you know, maybe we wanted to rename some of these, for example, maybe we wanted to call this real name instead of birth name and hometown instead of home city. And so last step here, let's just run this end to end to confirm that this is operating in the way that we would expect. And we can see it did create this view, created it in this particular schema for me. So let's come in here and take a look. If we go to analytics, if we go under here, we can see here it is staging public hip hop artists. Let's preview this. And here's the data. At this point now we can see we've taken a value that was an unstructured JSON object. We were able to use built in snowflake functionality and DBT slash Jinja features. And we also created it in a way that we can reuse it for any future source that has the same structure by using that macro that we created. So I hope you found this helpful. I know this is something I've run into quite a bit, so hopefully it'll help you as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video.